Last month, the Iranian government made a shocking announcement it plans to replace every GPS-based positioning service in the country with China's Beidou navigation system and eventually block GPS signals altogether. Think about that for a second. The same GPS that guides planes through Iranian airspace helps ships find ports and synchronizes the timing of phone networks and banks could go dark overnight. Missiles could lose their targets. Drones could drift off course. Even cash machines might stop syncing with central servers. Why would a country take a risk that huge? What's driving this sudden technological divorce from the United States? And more importantly, can China's Beidou really stand in for the system that the entire world has depended on for decades? In this video, we'll trace the full story. From the secret military origins of GPS, to the rise of China's alternative network, and finally, to the high-stakes decision that's putting Iran at the center of a new global navigation battle. To understand why Iran's move is so significant, we first need to rewind to where this all began, the Cold War. Back in the 1970s, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a fierce technological rivalry. Both sides wanted every possible edge in precision warfare. The U.S. military came up with something revolutionary a system of satellites that could pinpoint any object, anywhere on Earth, at any time. This became the Global Positioning System, or GPS. Originally, GPS was meant purely for war. It was designed so American missiles, ships, and aircraft could hit their targets with astonishing accuracy. But soon, the potential went far beyond the battlefield. When the system was open to civilians, it quietly reshaped the modern world. Today, GPS is like an invisible utility, as vital as electricity or the internet. It guides airplanes and container ships across continents, keeps train schedules precise, and helps emergency responders find accident sites within seconds. It even underpins the financial world. Every credit card transaction and stock market trade depends on GPS timing signals that synchronize computers down to the millisecond. If all those satellites were suddenly turned off, cities wouldn't just lose navigation. Entire economies would seize up. Think of it as cutting power to the planet's nervous system. That's how deeply GPS runs through our global infrastructure. But here's where things get uncomfortable. Even though GPS feels like a universal public service, it isn't. It's owned and operated by the U.S. government, specifically by the U.S. Space Force. That means one country and one military ultimately holds the switch. Now, under normal conditions, GPS is open and free for everyone. But in times of conflict, the U.S. can legally restrict, degrade, or even cut off signals over specific regions. In fact, there have been documented cases where GPS accuracy was deliberately reduced in war zones, not to harm civilians, but to prevent enemies from using it for military advantage. Think about what that means in practice. A drone relying on GPS could suddenly lose its position mid-flight. Missiles could drift off course. Commercial airliners might have to divert or land manually. Even the financial system which depends on GPS timing to keep global transactions in sync, could face serious delays or data errors. In a world where almost everything runs on satellite timing, that's a powerful form of leverage. Imagine if during a political standoff, your country's navigation system started giving false readings, or your shipping routes vanished from the map. You wouldn't just lose convenience, you'd lose control. That's the strategic fear behind GPS dependency. It's not about maps on your phone, it's about sovereignty. And that fear is exactly what drove China to start building a rival system of its own. In the late 1990s, China had its own wake-up call. During a regional maritime dispute, Chinese ships reportedly lost access to precise U.S. GPS data right when they needed it most. For Beijing, that moment was a warning. If a foreign power could control its positioning and timing, it could control its military mobility, trade, and even its national security. So, in 2000, China launched its answer. Beidou, named after the Northern Dipper, a star constellation used for navigation since ancient times. 
What began as a small regional experiment quickly evolved into a national mission, build a fully independent global navigation system that no one could switch off. Over two decades, China invested billions to expand Beidou from just a handful of satellites to a global constellation of more than 50. Each satellite broadcasts signals similar to GPS, but with a few twists. Beidou claims centimeter-level accuracy in some regions, useful for autonomous vehicles and precision farming, and it includes a short message service, allowing users to send brief texts even without cell coverage. The system is also built with redundant anti-jamming features, at least according to Chinese officials, to protect it in hostile electronic environments. But Beidou isn't just about technology, it's about strategy. Every satellite launched gave China more independence from U.S. control and more influence over countries that chose to integrate its system. For Beijing, navigation is no longer a convenience, it's an instrument of global power a digital compass that points towards self-reliance. And now countries like Iran are looking at that compass with interest. Because when you depend on someone else's satellites, your freedom of movement is only as strong as their goodwill. For Iran, the decision to abandon GPS wasn't just ideological, it was born out of experience. In recent years, regional conflicts have exposed a harsh truth. Depending on foreign controlled navigation systems can make your defenses vulnerable. During military operations and drone strikes, there were reports of navigation disruptions, signals jamming, misdirected drones, and unexplained system drops that hampered coordination. Even if not all of these incidents were directly tied to GPS manipulation, they reinforced a dangerous perception. Iran's military infrastructure was at the mercy of external systems. Then came another turning point. The realization that location data itself could be a weapon. Iranian officials have publicly claimed that location-enabled devices, from cell phones to vehicle trackers, were exploited in targeted assassinations and airstrikes. Whether those claims are fully verified or not, the fear they sparked was real. In Tehran's view, the ability of foreign powers to trace movement through a network they control was unacceptable. So, when China offered Beidou, a navigation system outside U.S. reach, integrated with Iran's growing tech and trade ties under their 25-year cooperation agreement, the move started to look less like a leap of faith and more like a strategic upgrade. For Iran, switching to Beidou isn't only about better satellites. It's about sovereignty, survival, and signaling independence in a world where digital infrastructure is as strategic as oil pipelines. And that brings us to the core question every analyst is asking. Can Beidou actually replace GPS in practice? Or is Iran trading one dependency for another? So, can Iran really pull the plug on GPS and switch entirely to Beidou? The short answer, not easily, but it's more possible now than ever. Let's break it down. First, coverage. Beidou has reached global reach since around 2020, meaning its satellites can provide positioning almost anywhere on Earth. In theory, that puts it on the same playing field as GPS. But global doesn't always mean equal. Signal reliability can vary by region. And since most Beidou ground stations are concentrated in Asia, accuracy is typically best there. Next, accuracy and resilience. Chinese engineers claim Beidou can achieve centimeter-level precision with local augmentation, especially useful for autonomous vehicles, agriculture, and construction. In contrast, GPS generally provides meter-level accuracy for civilians, though it can be much sharper for the U.S. military. Still, such pinpoint precision depends on dense ground infrastructure, something Iran would need to build and maintain itself. Then there's robustness. Beidou advertises anti-jamming features and encrypted military signals, but experts caution that no system is invulnerable. Space weather, cyber attacks, or deliberate signal interference can still degrade performance. And while Beidou gives Iran political independence, it also introduces a new kind of dependence on China's technology, spare parts, and long-term data cooperation. Finally, compatibility. 
Iran's aircraft, ships, and even phone networks are built around GPS receivers. Switching isn't like changing an app. It means replacing or reconfiguring thousands of devices, updating software, retraining personnel, and ensuring international compliance with aviation and maritime standards. It's a massive logistical challenge that could take years. So while Beidou may match or even outperform GPS in certain areas, a complete transition isn't something that happens overnight. It's more like replacing the foundation of a city while people are still living in it. Risky, expensive, but possible with enough time and willpower. Iran isn't the first to look east for navigation independence. Across Asia, the Middle East, and parts of Africa, Beidou has been quietly gaining ground, not through declarations, but through adoption. Take Pakistan, for example. It was among the earliest countries to integrate Beidou into its military and civilian systems. Official reports mention its use for troop coordination, border mapping, and even infrastructure planning under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. In the Gulf states, ports and maritime fleets have begun installing Beidou receivers alongside GPS units. Why? Because redundancy means resilience. If one signal fails or gets jammed, the other keeps ships moving. In Southeast Asia, fishing fleets in countries like Thailand and Indonesia have started using Beidou-based devices supplied through Chinese funding programs. These systems not only provide navigation, but also two-way messaging, a lifeline for small vessels far from shore. And in Africa, Beidou terminals are appearing in logistics corridors funded by Chinese infrastructure loans, linking trade networks directly into Beijing's digital orbit. But here's the key insight. Most nations aren't replacing GPS. They're layering systems. Their receivers read signals from multiple constellations, GPS, Beidou, Galileo, and Russia's GLONASS, combining them for higher accuracy and reliability. In a way, that's the pragmatic middle ground between politics and practicality. Diversify your systems, reduce your risk. For Iran, that might be the real model, not cutting GPS cold, but building a dual system where Beidou provides security and sovereignty, while GPS ensures compatibility with global commerce. So what does Iran's GPS breakup actually mean for the rest of us? In one line, it's a signal that the world's digital map is fragmenting and countries are redrawing the lines in orbit. Iran's move is driven by three forces, vulnerability, geopolitics, and technological opportunity. It fears that relying on a U.S.-controlled system leaves it exposed. It's deepening economic and security ties with China, which offers an alternative network ready to use and it's betting that a homegrown or China-backed navigation setup will give it more control over its own destiny. Technically, Beidou can match or even outshine GPS in some aspects. Politically, it gives partners an escape from dependence on the U.S. But in reality, the future won't be about one system replacing another. It'll be about coexistence. Multiple constellations working in parallel forming a more resilient, but also more divided, global infrastructure. There are three possible paths ahead. First, a gradual move toward redundancy, nations blending signals from several systems for safety. Second, the rise of regional blocks, where alliances shape which satellites they trust. And third, a new technological race, as countries invest in their own sovereign systems from Europe's Galileo to India's Navic. For ordinary people, this isn't just a story about satellites. It's about the systems that keep flights on course, deliveries on time, and digital payments secure. The next time your phone finds your location in seconds, remember, that convenience is part of a quiet global power struggle happening thousands of kilometers above you. If you want to go deeper, tell us in the comments. Would you trust your country's navigation to another nation's satellites? And if you'd like a follow-up video on how GNSS receivers actually work, or a country-by-country -country map of who's joining Beidou, hit subscribe and let us know which one you'd watch first.